Now we're going to move on to a Rawlsian theory of justice. So according to John Rawls, his theory of justice was uh, one of fairness or equity. So yes, equality is important, but sometimes in order to do what's fairest, then there needs to be unequal redistribution of certain benefits or goods in a society. So John Rawls was also a Harvard philosopher. And interestingly, Rawls's office was right next door to, to Robert Nozick. So you can just imagine the sort of interesting conversations they were having about this issue. Well, so according to John Rawls, his theory of justice was rooted in what we sometimes describe as a social contract theory. This is a political theory based upon everybody agreeing either explicitly or implicitly in a kind of contractarian way to certain ways in which we would design or construct an ideal city or an ideal society. Now for Rawls' theory of justice, the most fundamental or most important moral constraint that he thought was important here was what he described as the veil of ignorance. Now the veil of ignorance is really quite simple to understand. Think about Lady Liberty, right? Lady Liberty is supposed to be blind to justice. Uh, Lady Liberty is weighing the scales of what's right and wrong, what's good and bad, just and unjust, fair and unfair. And she is supposed to not be able to pay attention to anything that's uh, going to sway that, that decision in one way or another. And so that veil of ignorance is actually quite crucial for Rawls' theory of justice. And that's because for Rawls, he designed this sort of hypothetical social contract where uh, decisions were made, decisions regarding the sort of, sort of social arrangements in one society. Uh, these decisions were made behind the veil of ignorance. So on this view, uh, no one really knows th their age, or their race, or their gender, or their health, how many children they have, their wealth, their social economic status, or any of the other sort of arbitrary personal pieces of information that might sway us in one way or another when we're designing what an ideal or a just society might be like. So this sort of hypothetical situation is what we're going to sort of, when we begin thinking about Rawls's theory of justice as a kind of fairness. So, now, according to Rawls, everybody was sort of, generally speaking, self-interested. And we would choose to construct an ideal society, the sort of social institutions that we have in place in this social contract. We would construct these in a way in which we would avoid risk. And that's because we're self-interested and we're risk averse, according to John Rawls. So Rawls's theory was really kind of a Kantian theory insofar as this view really supposed to impose impartiality or fairness on those decision-making features in this hypothetical situation. It's supposed to rule out those situations that would cause the social institutions to be rooted in unfairness. Again, this is the reason why the veil of ignorance was so fundamental for Rawls's view. For Rawls, he called this hypothetical situation the original position. The original position is kind of a thought experiment where we sort of imagine what we would do if we did not know anything about our own particular situation in life. What sort of society would we all agree to? What sort of society would we want to construct? What sort of social institutions would we want to put in place if we did not know what our situation was in that society? That is the original position. That's the thought experiment that's bedrock for Rawls's theory of justice. So with the notion of original position in mind, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to see how exactly Rawls argues for his view of justice. So let's think about that. Well, according to Rawls, his basic argument went like this. The rational choice that one would make under the original position, where of course the veil of ignorance was in place, would be to choose a social contract, or that is to construct a society as if once the veil was lifted, it was possible that one would be amongst the least well off in that society. Think about what you would do in the original position if once the veil of ignorance was gone, you might be the poorest person in that society. Again, remember that Rawls thought we were self-interested creatures and that we were generally risk adverse. So we would want to do what's best for ourselves and we would want to avoid putting ourselves in a risky situation. What kind of society would we 
we construct in that original position? Well, according to Rawls, we would choose a society that would be the fairest for everyone in the society, regardless of anyone's particular situation or position in that society. That was the basic argument that Rawls offered for his view of justice as fairness. And Rawls called this basic principle the difference principle. So now with these points in mind, let's consider what exactly Rawls's theory looks like. So according to a Rawlsian theory of justice, uh, justice would entail that every citizen in the society would have equal access to the available medical care, generally speaking. Unless, well, unless if it was the case that unequal access favored benefiting the poor. Again, this is because of the original position, this thought experiment that Rawls was working with. And for Rawls, such decisions would be chosen and agreed upon under the veil of ignorance. But of course, I also want to reemphasize that this is a thought experiment. It should be understood as a kind of idealization. That is, it's the sort of thing that we can use to work back from, right? We take an idealization, this thought experiment where we're under the veil of ignorance and what would happen once the veil was lifted. Rawls did not think this was any kind of an actuality. It was just an idealization that we use when we're trying to consider what justice actually is. 